In this video, I'm going to talk to you about statins in diabetes. And statins are um, the more, most commonly used class of uh, cholesterol medications in general, but also in people with diabetes. And the doctors are always, or they always seem to be pushing everybody to get on these statin drugs when it's appropriate, but especially people with diabetes. And even if the cholesterol numbers are normal, the uh, endocrinologists are often pushing for people to be on statin drugs. The statin drugs include these medications. You have uh, Pravacol, which is Pravastatin, Zocor, Simvastatin, Vitorin, which is a combination of Simvastatin and the drug Azetamide, Lipitor, which is atorvastatin, Crestor, which is rosuvastatin, and Mevacor, which is lovastatin. So anything with a the generic has statin on it is one of these statin drugs. And um, now, of course, you know all cholesterol medications will have an impact on the cholesterol numbers. I mean that's a given. That's their purpose in general. So if your triglycerides, your LDL cholesterol, which is the lousy cholesterol and your HDL, your healthy cholesterol. And, you know, if these numbers are out of whack, let's say someone with diabetes, let's say our goal for the LDL might be below 100 in some people. Um, and let's say the person's uh, LDL cholesterol number is 134. Well, adding on a statin drug and some other drugs will tend to push this downward and let's say you may get it below 100. But let's say all these numbers are flat out normal. Normal, normal, normal. Most endocrinologists would actually recommend that in someone with diabetes, a person has diabetes, even if all the cholesterol numbers are normal, to still go on some dose of a statin drug. So what the heck's that all about? That doesn't really seem to make much sense. Why go on one of these medications uh, if the cholesterol is normal? Well, yes, the medications may help lower the lousy cholesterol, but there's another effect, another very important effect that the statins have, and that is that they're anti-inflammatory in the coronary arteries. So this is sort of a side effect, another effect but a good effect, anti the anti-inflammatory nature of these drugs in the coronary arteries. So what the heck does inflammation or an anti-inflammatory effect have to do with the coronary arteries? Well, let's say this is one of the big blood vessels in your heart. And this is the wall of the artery. And this here, this thing here, is a big plaque. So it's a cholesterol plaque that's built up in, inside the artery. This is the blood flow. The blood flow is going this way, coming through the artery. And you can have a pretty major blockage of the artery and still have pretty good blood flow. Now, you may live a long time or live your whole life with some plaques of, you know, even decent-sized plaques in your artery, and sometimes they may never cause you any real harm. But what happens is, in some people, especially people with diabetes, white blood cells will migrate in here. White blood cells migrate in. And basically there's some other changes that go on, but essentially these white blood cells migrate in and then they'll release digestive enzymes. And these digestive enzymes will tend to crack through to the surface. And when that happens, when there's a crack through to the surface, it actually exposes the blood to this gunk down here, and then a clot will start to form. And then it'll grow, and grow rapidly until it blocks off the blood flow. Now, a plaque that has no inflammation in it is considered a stable plaque, generally speaking. One with inflammation in it and that's tending to rupture like this would be considered an unstable plaque. People with diabetes are much more likely to get the inflammation. 
in the plaques. Many people will have the inflammation anyway, but people with diabetes are much more likely to have inflammation in the plaques. They're much more likely to have unstable plaques. So even if the cholesterol numbers are normal, if they're, even if they're perfect, it's usually recommended that if it's okay for that person to use a statin drug to cut down on the likelihood of inflammation and stabilize any plaques the person may have. And even if a person does not have known coronary disease, there's a very good chance that there are some plaques in the arteries. And you don't need a particularly large plaque to have a heart attack off of. You can have a relatively small plaque and still have this rupture event. So the anti-inflammation, the stability of plaques, above and beyond its, uh, the statin's effect on cholesterol numbers, that's the reason why we tend to push for people with diabetes to have statin drugs, because people with diabetes are much more prone to developing this inflammation than those without diabetes. The end.